Thank you, guys. Can you hear me? Damn, it's bright up here, huh? Damn. So uh, a few things before I, before I get into this. Slides up? Cool. Uh, number one, I'm 30. I turned 30 this week. Um, unfortunately, I'm no longer in my late 20s. Um, <laughs> getting up there. Uh, number two, I uh, had the flu horribly this week. I'm still coming off of it, really congested. I'm not going to be able to talk as fast as I usually do, unfortunately. Now, if I, <coughs> if I have to take time to cough, just excuse me, ignore it. I'm fine. I'll be okay. Uh, number three, um, you know, I'm not formally a member of OMG, um, and uh, I wanted to take a second and thank Cotton for having me out here. I genuinely appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to you guys, and also to thank you guys for showing up. It's Friday. It's the weekend. You're taking time out of your lives. Yeah, give yourself a hand. You should be. Um, go ahead, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you took time. You put in a, money, a, a monetary investment. This is a big deal. Um, you deserve to be congratulated. I am going to do everything in my power to deliver as much value as possible for you guys and really give you an ROI for your time and money for coming here. So with that being said, let's get into it. So what I'm going to talk about today is an e-commerce site that I started called Laces Out. We sell shoelaces for sneakers. Uh, we launched in March, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about the backstory in a minute. But essentially what happened is um, within couple of months, we just hit like 1.5 million page views from organic search. That's, should say organic page views. So 1.5 million organic page views in just six months, just explosive growth. And I'm going to literally give you kind of the business in a box, not just SEO, but everything that I did really from coming up with an ideation to where I am today. And then what I have as plans for the future for this as well. So let's get into it. First thing I always do, I always start with social proof. I'm not a bullshitter. I want you guys to see that Everything that I'm going to tell you in here is exactly how I did this. This is a screenshot from Google Analytics. You can see it launched in March. And in August, we did what, like 500K or so? I don't know. So a lot of page views, right, from organic search. Um, you can also check SCM Rush when you get some time. This has gone up even more since the new algorithm updated. We are absolutely killing it. Um, just seeing explosive growth. Uh, and money, too. Everyone is asked, are you getting traffic, man? But are you making any money? You're like, yeah, we're making money. Uh, we're, we're selling some laces. Um, and honestly, I started this as a case study for my agency, Webris. It's, Webris is my life. I spend, God, I can't even tell you how many hours working. It's more like when I'm not working is what I actually count. Um, we're growing fast. We're hiring people. We're doing a lot of cool things. And, uh, you know, we got to the point with Webris where I think probably all of you that are first getting started, you hit that point where you just don't want to work with small clients anymore, right? Like $500 is just not enough for your time, for your team's time. Um, so I wanted to start working with bigger clients. And uh, I saw that as e-commerce. It's really a much more scalable model than uh, a local business. You know, you rank a local business and then what? They start pulling checks and you're kind of sitting there with, you know, shit out of luck. Pardon my French. But so we like to do e-commerce. It's just much more scalable. Um, so I built this just as a case study because I wanted to show people that we're really damn good and I believe that we're the best in the world at what we do and I wanted to prove that. Um, what started as a case study has turned into a, a very viable business opportunity now and really the future for this uh, is something that I'll touch on but it's, it's, it's a legitimate business. Doing almost 10000 a month, going to do about 12000 this month. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I'm excited about it and uh, I want to share with you a lot about that. So more importantly, um, you know, like I said, I'm busy with Webris. I didn't spend a lot of money to get this going. Uh, less than $5,000 to get everything up and running on the site. That might be a lot for some of you. That might be nothing for some of you other guys. I'm just letting you know what it was. Um, as you can see, $5,000 were already profitable in month three from that. Um, I'm going to talk more about that too. Uh, and more importantly, um, you know, I don't spend any time doing this anymore. I don't have time. I don't want to do it, right? I don't want to manage a shoelace store. It's not what I do best. So I spend, with my time, it's even less than 10 hours a month. I put that up there to be generous. I probably spend like 20 minutes a month on it now, the last two months. I don't do anything for it. It's just completely automated, and I'm going to talk to you about how I did that too. Come on. And uh, this is a business in a box, right? So like I said, I'm not going to come up here and just talk to you about SEO. I consider myself a well-rounded marketer, everything from social, search, email, it's just the way the internet works, right? I mean, people don't just search for something and buy it anymore. You've got to be everywhere, um, especially in e-commerce, and especially if you want to sell something that has some sort of value to it. People are going to search around, so you've got to be everywhere. So I'm going to give that to you. This is what I'm going to talk about is this business. So sound good? Yeah. Come on, man. I drove up here from Miami. I'm tired of shit. I'm sick. Come on, man. Thank you. All right. 
cool. So, thank you. I like that. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about myself, my favorite thing in the whole world to do. So like I said, I consider myself a full stack marketer. That just means search, social, everything. Uh, you know, I consider myself a student of the game. I'm always learning and I'm always learning about really what works. You know, that's really what matters to me. It's what works right now and it's always changing by the second. Um, so. Okay, so I have eight years of, of client-facing experience. Um, I used to work for a very big consulting firm. That's how I got into digital. I got my background in tech and analytics. Um, and through those big companies, I got to work with Target, uh, Best Buy, some really, really big companies doing their SEO. It was incredible experience. Um, but on the same note, what I realized was that doing SEO for companies like that, it's not like doing SEO for a small business or your own site, right? Like, the type of SEO that they do is much more maintenance. It's much more fixing things. They have no idea about growth. They don't know about link building. They don't know about really how to be a human when it comes to marketing. So, <clears throat> you know, I really started looking at doing my own stuff and putting the pieces together. And that's really how I kind of built this agency, Webris. Um, that's, like I said, that's what I do <sighs> my life. That's what I spend doing. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot of work, as some of you guys know, but. It's my baby, and that's really where I spend most of my time. This is really just a side project for me. Uh, but Webers, we do organic search and mostly content marketing. Um, you know, I want to touch quickly on this. As Cotton mentioned, I do things a little bit differently. It's not because so much that I have a view about like PBNs or, or search bots or whatever. It's, I don't really care. Do what works for you, right? It's, it's, it's your own website. It's your own business. But this is just what, how I learned. Um, like I said, I came up in the corporate world, and they don't use PBNs. It's just not the way they do it. So I have a much different view of how I do marketing, and you're going to see that throughout this uh, presentation. <clears throat> I believe this is really important to me. <laughs> I believe in research, strategy, process, execution, and growth. I think that if you're not growing every day, every month, then you're losing. You're going the wrong way. I'm a growth marketer. Everything is about growing, getting bigger, getting, <laughs> getting more revenue in the door. <clears throat> Finally, marketing at scale, I'm gonna talk more about this later, but this is really the beauty of the internet. Like, you can reach whoever you want, whenever you want, at scale. And it's really how you grow a business fast in today's market. Um, I already said this, I'm uh, not a member of OMG. Uh, I'm just happy to be here and uh, happy to talk to you guys about this stuff. So, what I'm gonna cover. So, it's gonna be the end-to-end -end process. I'm gonna start a little bit with the ideation of how it came up, like, why am I selling shoelaces? I'm gonna talk about that. Um, quickly, because I think Liz does this stuff a lot better than I do. I'm just going to touch on some of the points that I covered. I'm going to talk about the strategy. This is going to be the bulk of this presentation. I'm a firm believer in doing the work up front and automating on the back end. So I'm going to talk to you a lot about strategy. I'm going to talk about the setup of the website, the design, the functionality, the SEO pieces, all that stuff. Content, this is really important to this business and really important to me and how I market. I'm a big time content marketer. Um, to me, it's the glue of the internet right now. I'm gonna talk about promotion, I'm gonna talk about link building, all that fun stuff that a lot of SEOs love talking about. And I'm gonna talk about building a process, and I'm gonna talk about automation, because like I said, I am not going to sit around and uh, write blog posts about shoelaces. It's just not a good use of my time or anyone's time, right? So, I'll talk about that, and then I'm gonna touch on the future, where we are right now, and where I see this thing going. So, let's quickly just breeze through these slides about getting started. I hate putting a lot of text on here, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go through it really quickly, but this is a framework that I use for, for product selection, right? I call it the low and the high. You wanna have some things low and some things high. So one of the things is cost. When you're picking a product to sell online for the first time, uh, if you're just getting started with this, and especially if you're gonna be buying it from China and, and just selling it arbitrage, you wanna have a, a low cost product. This is gonna keep your initial investment down, so you're not gonna be spending you know, 50 grand on some TVs getting shipped over. Um, it's gonna keep shipping costs, <coughs> excuse me, it's gonna keep shipping costs down, and it's gonna mitigate your overall risk. You also wanna keep the weight down, shipping costs is huge, and also storage, like where are you gonna put this stuff? This was a problem for me, I had it in my condo, my girlfriend wanted to slit my throat for the first two months because I had boxes of shoelaces everywhere, it was crazy. Um, tech, you want something low tech. You do not want, uh, you know, the biggest, <laughs> the biggest pain in the ass about running any business is, is really dealing with customers and customer service, and if you're selling something that has a high propensity to break, it's not gonna be fun, right? You don't wanna be selling cell phones and getting emails from people like, my phone is, you just don't do it. Keep it simple, keep it, um, you know, I, said, I like to sell commodities, right? Something that everybody needs that's, the quality is kind of just standardized, right? Like shoelaces, you don't even pay attention to them. Um, mitigate low quality products, okay. And then competition and brands, you wanna have something with low competition in terms of really the SERPs and in terms of online competition. 
One of the reasons why I love shoelaces was because the big brands don't really push the laces that hard. Nike sells a lot of shoes, but they don't really push their laces that hard. So there's an opportunity for me to step in and really become like a laces brand. Um, when it comes to the high side, you want something with high demand. Obviously, if you're gonna be selling something for $3, you you gotta sell a lot of it to make money. So there's gotta be a large demand. You can just check things like Google Search, Keyword Planner, and uh, Amazon also has some tools if you wanna sell on Amazon. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, passion, so this is, this is something that I don't think a lot of people talk about, but when you're marketing something, you wanna market it to a passionate audience. I mean, look around, there's, <laughs> SEO is obviously a very passionate space, online marketing is a very passionate space, right? You wanna look for the same type of niche to sell a product in because it's gonna allow you to market it at scale to a lot of people. Um, and then potential, oh, also too, something that you're interested in, this is big for me, I like sneakers, I have a lot of pairs of them, so, uh, you know, building, Building a brand and building a business around shoelaces um, wasn't too much of a stretch for me in terms of keeping my attention span because I have really bad ADD. Uh, and then potential. Uh, to me, I don't, you know, there's, there's, there's two types of businesses. There's ones that make money, which is fine. I'm not gonna, that's, if that's your prerogative, that's you. But I like to build businesses. I like to build companies. I like to build brands. I'm a big brand marketer. I believe in brands. I think it's what makes people buy. Um, so I like to look at something with a lot of potential to not just make, you know, couple thousand bucks selling shoelaces, I want this to be long term, right? So those are my kind of tips on what to pick a product to sell for. This is where you're gonna sell it, right? I don't really wanna touch too much on this. Um, you know, there's Amazon, Shopify. I built it on WooCommerce because WordPress is like language to me. Um, it, I'm just comfortable using it. My team's comfortable using it, so it's very easy for us. <coughs> Amazon is a whole nother <coughs> can of worms. The reason I didn't go with Amazon was because they were gonna take too much of a cut for FBA. And uh, you lose a lot of ability to market on Amazon because you don't own the site. You know, I like to own it, and uh, marketing is what I do best, so I didn't want to lose that ability. So um, the other big platforms doesn't really apply to anybody here. So this is going to be the bulk of this talk here, strategy. Again, like I said, I like to do 90% of the work up front. <coughs> Excuse me. I uh, believe that good research and good planning and good strategy is the great groundwork and the driver like this picture here, very straightforward, I guess, of, uh, of the campaign. It's gonna dictate the entire business um, from the brand, from your messaging, to the product that you're selling, everything. The strategy is huge. Um, it requires a lot of work up front, like I said, but saves time in the long run. You know, you do the work up front, you get it done, and then you figure out a way to automate it, which again, I'm gonna show you how. So, it all starts with a brand. Again, like I said, I'm a brand marketer. Um, you know, at the end of the day, most of us are selling the same thing. I mean, everyone in this room is selling SEO, right? Right, what's the difference? Brand, right? Everyone here has shoelaces, what's the difference? Brand, everyone has a phone, brand, right? It, the brand is ultimately what makes you buy. So, <coughs> Apple users is a perfect example because my iPhone 6 crapped out on me literally two days ago. Of course, when the new iPhone update comes out, <coughs> GPS doesn't work, it gets all hot. What's that? I'm sorry, can you, can you not hear me? Oh, sorry. Oh, well. I guess same for all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, all right, cool. I couldn't hear you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't mind if you interrupt. By the way, you know, it's, I, I don't like just talking to people, so feel free. Um, but yeah, I mean, but ultimately, what's going to happen? I'm going to go buy another iPhone because that's I'm never going to buy. I'm not going to buy an Android. Are you kidding me? I don't know how to use that shit. You know what I mean? So it's it's brand, right? That's what it does. So again, this picture is kind of funny. It's the same thing again, right? The new iPhone comes out and it's actually a worse product, and I'm still going to buy it, right? It's the power of a brand. <laughs> it's something that a lot of SEOs, especially, don't talk about. You know, and again. Just, there's a lot of misconceptions about brands and what a brand does. You know, people look at an Apple and obviously give that as an example as what a brand should be, but it's not, right? Brands in today's world are built overnight, right? And there's different types of brands. You know, you don't have to be a mega brand. You can just be a niche brand, right? And has anyone here heard of Shreds? Anyone use Instagram? Yeah, okay. So in 2012, uh, this dude who, CEO of Shreds, was living in his mom's basement and he was hawking some protein products, the same crap as everyone else, right? Same, literally, same protein that everyone sells, whatever it was. He made about 90,000, not bad, right? In 20, damn it, I was supposed to ask you what you thought they made, damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and this is actually supposed to, yeah, exactly, thank you. This is actually supposed to be 2013. So in 2013, this is a typo, they did $5 million in one year. I mean, Cotton's grown incredibly, but I don't even know if he's grown, that's just incredible, right? How do they do it? Influencer marketing. If you've seen Shreds anywhere, what they did, they just found a lot of really attractive men and women with abs and beautiful bodies, and they sent them product. That's it. <laughs> they sent them product. Now, influencer marketing is incredibly competitive now. You can't launch a campaign like they did just because these people are gonna charge you, you know, 1,500 bucks for one post, and the ROI just isn't there, but that's how Shreds built the brand. But more importantly, 
what they did, they didn't go after the whole fitness market. What they did, they niched down, right? You really wanna find a niche within a space, whatever you're selling, shoelaces, protein, whatever. Find the niche market within whatever you're doing and focus on that and become that brand, that go-to brand like Shreds did in that market. And that's really the beauty of the internet is that people think that niching down is bad, right? Because why do you wanna sell to less people? That doesn't make any sense. We wanna sell to everybody, no. The internet allows you to reach everybody. How many people have a cell phone on them right now? Everybody, come on, man, that's everybody. <laughs> Everybody's got a cell phone, everyone has the internet, right? You can reach every single person in this room and really in the entire country, pretty much, everyone has a smartphone. The internet is everywhere, right? And you can reach people in their back pocket. That's some pretty powerful shit, okay? That's <coughs> with the state of the internet now and there's no more niche markets, right? Even the nichest of the niche is not a niche anymore. You can reach them and you can sell to them. So for laces out, we found the right one, right? When it comes to shoelaces, they go in every type of shoe, boots, um, cleats, uh, dress shoes, sneakers, everything, right? We decided to focus just on the sneaker market because for a lot of reasons, right? But for, it's filled with passionate people. Um, these people spend a lot of money on shoes even when they don't have it. You know, people will buy a pair of Jordans for 200 bucks and completely break their bank account. It's just the nature of the market. Um, there's a very passionate community, sneakerheads. Um, it's just what we wanted to go with. It fit all my criteria above, so we chose to niche down and just focus on the sneaker market. If you go to our website, we don't sell anything but sneaker shoelaces, right? So even within that, this is really important. This is something that we do for all of our clients. A lot of people think it's fluff, but it's really not. To me, this is one of the most important parts about marketing. If you don't know who you're selling to, if you don't know who your target audience is and who your customer exactly is down to their name, their age, their sex, uh, you know, ASL, any AIM users in here? That's really, ASL, yeah, you like that, huh? <laughs> um, we build a, a, a customer persona, right? We wanna know everything about who we're trying to sell it to. So again, we're finding a niche within the niche, right? Like, there's women that buy sneaker shoelaces, there's men, but like, we wanna focus on the people that are most propensity to buy most likely to buy and blow that out. We wanna become that brand for those people, right? We wanna drive repeat customers, we wanna drive social shares, all that stuff. We wanna be that brand for those people. So we wanna know things like age, sex, location, income, preferred media, the slang that they use, right? Like I hate when I go to, like you can just tell when a website is out of touch because they're not speaking to their audience, right? Like their messaging is just wrong. It just makes you uncomfortable, right? Like you have to be able to speak the same language as your customers. That's really important. It sounds stupid, but it's really important. You want to know their social preferences. I mean, you should know who they're voting for in the election, right? <coughs> All this stuff, I mean, and most importantly, where do they spend their time online? Are they Snapchat users, Instagram, Facebook? You know, what do they like to do online? So one of the best ways that I know how to do this is just Facebook audience insights. Has everyone used this tool before? Yeah, it's incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. Facebook has, what, like two billion people online and all of their data, just a disgusting amount of data and you can play around with it in here. So basically what I do, is I just started typing in like sneakerheads and then I'll look at the most people that are they're like 18 to 24 and then you just reset it for sneakerheads 18 to 24. You just keep niching down until you find that most viral part of your market and that's really it. You know who they are. So <coughs> for Laces Out, our target customer was between 18 and 24. He's a male, his education is high school level, his income is low, he reads sneakernews.com, ESPN, he watches HBO, Netflix, he watches sports, he uses Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and just kind of like, again, we do this for all of our clients. We literally build this persona. We just do like a little little, little blurb that says he's a younger customer with low purchasing power. This person, person is highly active on social media, connected to their phone, and rarely uses a computer aside from school and work, right? Does anyone here have teenagers? Is that a kid? Does that sound like them a little bit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So why does this matter? I mean, why does this really matter? <laughs> Number one is pricing. Product, product pricing is a bitch, it sucks. To, you, you can't just go to your competitors and look and see what they're pricing and then just undercut them or overcut them. Like you wanna understand what your target audience is willing to buy, right? Do you wanna go premium? And a lot of people will always wanna go premium, right? I mean, just because what we see online and we see on Instagram and Snapchat is people live in the high lives, but like, come on, that's not America, we know that, right? Most people live in paycheck to paycheck. Like, you don't have to go the premium route and you have to know who your audience is and your customer is. If I went the premium route, I wouldn't have sold anything. If I'm trying to sell shoelaces to people with no money for 14 bucks, they're not gonna buy them, right? It's just stupid. You gotta understand that. <laughs> the marketing mix, right? So this means like, what, do you, what channels are you gonna use? Are you gonna use Facebook? Are you gonna use Instagram? Are you gonna use SEO? Are you gonna use content? What are you gonna do? You have to know where that person stays online in order to decide that, right? Where to spend your time. Because you don't wanna just be like, uh, and this drives me nuts with clients when they're like, uh, you know, I think I should be using Snapchat because like, I saw an article. I'm like, does your 
audience use Snapchat? They're like, I don't know, like, how do you not know? Like, you have to know this stuff, it's, it's, it's critical. And then branding and image, again, like I said, I'm a huge, huge brand person, huge brand person. And like, how are you gonna position your brand? How are you gonna communicate with your people? What's your website design gonna look like? What's, what are your social media updates gonna be about? All this stuff, you have to know your customer, what they want to, to cater to them. And once you understand who they are, everything becomes easy. And I really wanna take a kind of a side pivot here and talk about Webris with this because um, it's vastly different, right? So for, for Webris, we, we're B2B sales, right? And uh, this is how I dress every day. You know, I am who I am and um, you know, I don't wear a suit for, for a lot of reasons, but number one, because I'm not selling to people who wear suits. Like my target audience is 27 to 36 marketing managers at e-commerce and startups. That's my target audience, right? So as opposed to putting on a suit and you know, just kind of taking that mentality, it doesn't connect with them. It doesn't resonate with them. Like my target audience, if you look at anything across my brand, I use Twitter and I use Facebook and that's it. I don't waste my time on Snapchat and Instagram because it doesn't make me any money. My, my audience isn't on there. So I use Facebook, I spend a lot of money on Facebook and I spend a lot of time on Twitter because that's where they are. And then I create advanced content because what I try and do is if I wanna to sell to a marketing manager, there's two reasons why I chose marketing managers because number one, if you're a company, you have a marketing manager, you have a budget, right? You've got money to spend. <coughs> so in order for me to reach those people and convince them to hire me, I have to prove to them that I know more than them. So what I do is I just create really advanced content. That's why I created this case study. That's why I spent all this time building a side business so I can sell more contracts. And it works. Now 90% of my clients are e-commerce stores. And every single, it's crazy. If you look at who my clients are, every single one of them is in that range. They're 27 to 35. They're on like growthhackers.com. They read Moz. That's why I write for Moz. <laughs> you think I like writing guest posts? Like, hell no, it sucks. But that's where that's what they did sales contracts. You know what I mean? So know your audience. That's, you know, aside from this, it's whatever you're selling for your agency, know them. So <laughs> we got to know our competitors too. So I want to just kind of run you through a quick competitive audit, just the process that I use, it's very easy. SCM Rush, it's one of the best tools online. Um, all you're gonna do is start by typing your main keywords into the search bar, and what you're gonna do is just use them to discover your top competitors. <coughs> Excuse me, so right here, laced up laces, this is one of my top competitors, you just click on them, and then what happens is you see their traffic stats, right? It's very powerful stuff. Spying on them, is it going up, is it going down, is it stagnant, you know? And I can see, you can see the little yellow arrow down there in the bottom right, can you see that? All the images? The image traffic driving to their site, that's crazy, right? What does that tell you? Images are gonna be a big part of what we do because a lot of people are searching for them, right? So start spying your competitors, doing this. Then you're gonna scroll down, start looking at their keywords, start building a keyword list. I don't really do keyword research, I'm not really gonna talk about it here, but if you do, you can go ahead and steal them. What I like to do though is I like to find clusters of their top pages um, and you can filter for that. So with SRM Rush, what I do is I set a filter for only show me keyword pages that are ranking in positions three two, and one, because those are the top keywords, those are the most valuable, and then what you do is you look at the cluster of those pages, right? And what I do is I visit them, and I click on them, and I go to those pages. <coughs> and I heard Derek touch on this a little bit, but you really wanna look at what that page is and ask yourself, like, what is this page about? Why is it ranking for so many keywords, right? So do your little SEO analysis, look at their images, look at their alt tags, look at their links. Um, just try and tell yourself, ask yourself why this page is ranking. All right, you wanna understand this stuff to understand the market that you're getting into. You wanna click around the side a little bit, look at their images, is it responsive? Go, go ahead. SEM Rush, SEM Rush, yep. Questions are fine too, I don't take offense to you, it's fine. Um, you know, look at things like is it responsive, uh, how are they communicating? So you can see here, this company here, it says on their homepage, elevate your lace game. That's what I was talking about, product messaging. Like this, this company is obviously in touch with their market, right? It doesn't sell like, buy our spotted shoelaces, you know, like for your, for your sneakers. Like they know, they know their audience, right? That's why this company's killing it. I actually know their CEO, they're doing a lot of money. <coughs> How many products do they have? What do they charge? Are they charging for shipping? That's something you also gotta determine, right? Are they blogging? Are they creating content? Check their link profile, right? I use Ahrefs. Everyone know Ahrefs? Ahrefs is, I think, the best link indexing tool. Just dump it in. Take a look around, where are they coming from? Are they coming from forums? Are they coming from spammy sites? Are they coming from PR links? Are they coming from bloggers? Where do these people get their links from? How is it helping them rank so high? Just look at them, understand it. Pretty straightforward stuff. This is big too, you wanna click through and check out their social profiles. Um, if they are not doing a good job on social, what I always do is I'll take those keywords and then research social to find the top accounts, right? Because we don't wanna look at the bottom features, we wanna look at the people that are killing it. 
right? So this happens to be the same company. They're killing it on social. Uh, 80,000 Facebook fans for a sneaker sh uh, shoelace site and 40K on Instagram, right? So what does that tell you? Got to be on Facebook and Instagram. Got to be there. <laughs> so now I'm going to just run you down kind of the analysis that I got from looking at our competitors. So number one was uh, we found that everyone was selling the same crap, right? I love America. Everyone buying from China and selling them, but selling them for a very different range, right? From $4.99 to $12.99, literally the exact same shoelaces, I'm telling you, on like 15 different sites, the exact same that I had. So how am I going to sell them? Brand, man, right? Got to build a brand. Brand was going to be huge for this. I knew that getting in, but that really solidified it for me. <laughs> so I didn't want to price myself out of the market uh, by selling premium laces until I'd really built myself as a brand. So we just went mid-market and we're selling for like $6.99, right? Uh, a large reason for that is I want to get the sales data. Like, it's really, really important to get people to your site, have them purchase, you know, are they coming from search and purchasing right away? Are they coming from social and purchasing right away? They're coming in browsing and then purchasing. Are they coming back and purchasing? Are they purchasing the first time, second time? Like, that data is key. And then you can start, you know, raising your prices and figuring that out. But getting those initial sales first, you know, for a couple months is really key to understand your customer even more. Um, I found that review schema was everywhere. <laughs> I think Derek might have touched on this. Um, but, you know, it's pretty basic stuff. You know, like Amazon does it, and if, if Amazon's doing it and all the other competitors are doing you got to do it too. If you don't have stars, you know, basically what this is, is if you guys aren't familiar with it, if you search for a product and uh, you see those review stars coming through, it just takes up a lot more real estate and it catches your eye, it's going to get the clicks every time. So if they're doing it, you got to do it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the importance of category pages. So this is important um, from an SEO point of view. So it's tough with, with shoelaces because they're kind of like inherently plural, right? Like shoelaces is plural inherently, but if you're, when you're dealing with um, singular versus plural keywords, right? So like, um, like buy a clicker, right? If you click buy, if you search for buy a clicker, you're, the intent behind that search is gonna pull up an e-commerce page, right? A singular page. But if you're looking for buy clickers, you're probably looking to shop around. That's why sites like Yelp kill it, because they're aggregators and they're pulling through a bunch of different results for people to browse. It's what people want, it's what you want, you know? Hate Google all you want, but they're just doing what people want. So that's why category pages are key, right? Because what it does is it lists multiple products. So if you wanna rank for plural keywords, you've gotta optimize your category pages. And uh, like rope shoelaces, like th the first four results, they're all category pages. So that alone, I mean, knowing what, whatever you want about plural versus singular, whatever, but if you just see that, then you know, hey, category pages are gonna be big, especially for that keyword. We need that keyword. Uh, found that a huge pain point was shoelace sizing. So again, this goes back to knowing your customer, and this is really big for how we market the site, was people were just always annoyed in forums, on Quora, on Reddit, all over the place, just talking about like how they can't find the right size for their shoelaces because the information's not online. And when you go to Nike's site, the only information that they have about shoelace sizing is this little chart here. Doesn't tell you nothing, right? If you're looking for you know, a pair of shoes that you spent 200 bucks for and you're looking to replace the laces and this is all they got, there's an opportunity there, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so talk about keyword research for a second. I guess I lied, it's in here. Um, Google, <laughs> I don't use keyword research tools. I just use Google search. So hopefully you guys are familiar with this little hack, but if you type in like a keyword and then you hit space before it or space after it, what it does is gonna pull down all of the top search keywords and all of the most related keywords to that search. So if somebody's searching for that, they're also most likely searching for this. All the semantic, all the keyword research you need can be done with this, it's all that we do. Um, and this is really big, you know, it's more positive for the industry, but we found that a lot of people happen to be searching for like pictures of shoes on feet, right? Like people wanted to see pictures of like shoes on feet, right? I don't know. So. Um, when you type in on feet, and this is kind of crazy, right? When you type in the keyword on feet into Google, right? It could be anything, right? Like blisters on feet, uh, I don't know, hair on feet, right? Five, 50% of that most searched for are sneakers, right? People looking for uh, Jordans on feet, Adidas on feet, all that stuff. There's huge, huge volume. And when you take this to image search too, it changes the keyword list. And you're looking at a whole different set of keywords. So right there, we just scraped all of that and dumped it into a file. Um, for what I'm gonna talk about in a minute with content creation. So uh, again, this is just another one. Um, when you, we were looking at specifically like, we found that a lot of people, again, were looking for, um, you know, like Jordan 1 laces, re replacement laces for the sneakers that they paid a lot of money for, understandably so. And we found that they were doing a lot of long tails for actually like sneakers have like specific names. 
So uh, again, just more really long tail keywords that we knew we had to incorporate into the site. Um, we found out a lot about links. We found that forums were legit. It's not like the SEO industry, like people really use a lot of forums. They're spam free, they're very active, and they're very highly policed. Um, big media sites actively link to small blogs, like a lot. Just for having like a picture of like a new pair of shoes on your site is crazy. Like people would buy a new pair of Jordans, take a picture of it, and like sneakernews.com would cover it. Um, it's important for us, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, there's a lot of low quality spammy syndication sites because um, Chinese uh, sites sell like knockoff Jordans all the time and like knockoff Yeezy shoes. Um, and they just spam the hell out of the internet with links. So a lot of top sites were actually picking those up. Um, I don't want to talk too much about rank frame, but that's important for like AI and stuff like that. Um, top competitors don't rank because of awesome links. Um, there was something else going on. So the top sites didn't actually have a lot of links, which is really good whenever you're doing SEO, right? Because it means less work for you. Um, we found that Facebook and Instagram were the channels we had to be on. Twitter would be nice, but it'd be a lot of effort. Uh, a lot of sites rank for really good keywords or with really thin content. This is a picture of uh, this keyword lace swap ideas. So like people were searching again for like ways to like switch out their laces and their sneakers. Um, really high purchase intent if you think about it because if you sell shoelaces and people are searching for like, hey, what can I switch my Nikes with? Like, yeah, you wanna be there, of course, because you can just hawk them some laces while they're there. So um, really high purchase intent keywords with like, there's only 25 words on this page, it's crazy. So ranking for those keywords with really thin content. So let's recap, gonna focus on the sneaker side, gonna do mid-market pricing. Uh, competing against low authority sites uh, in a niche with a ton of search volume, SEO and content would be huge. Uh, need to have a presence on at least Facebook and Instagram. Damn, this is my old presentation. Um, incredibly mobile focused market. All right, let's just move on. Um, you guys good so far? Yeah. Makes sense? Okay, cool. Don't fall asleep on me now. Um, okay, so uh, I'm gonna kind of breeze through this too because uh, you know I actually got my undergrad in, um, in uh, graphic design. So um, at the time I thought that's what I wanted to do and then I realized you don't make any money so I stopped. But design is really important to me, really, really important to me and I think enough marketers don't talk about design. And number one is because, bro, nobody's buying, nobody's putting credit card information into a site that looks like shit, period. It's not gonna happen, right? I mean like I find a site that looks like it's from like 2001, I'm like come on man, like what are you gonna do with my credit card information? That's not gonna happen. So like design, from just the trust point of view, it's really important and if you don't kind of have a good context for design, you should start to learn because it's really, really, really important. Um, plus, all the competitors have nice sites. You know, again, brand, website design is incredibly important for brand. You know what I mean? Like, there's a reason why um, Facebook changes their look. You don't, probably don't even realize it, but Facebook changes like once a month. They're constantly changing, constantly tweaking. Uh, it's really important. Um, so I found a custom designer. He now works for me full time. He did an awesome job. 75 bucks a page, right? I mean, you don't have to do custom design. I'm just kind of walking you through what we did. Um, if you use Shopify, and honestly, in hindsight, <laughs> going back, I would have used Shopify because Shopify is incredible. Um, just the hard-headedness of myself for the reason I didn't. But um, So if you want to get a website design custom, which I strongly suggest you guys do, templates, templates are limited. You can only do so much. Um, just literally all you have to do is give them examples of what you like and what you don't. Uh, communicate with them, tell them, write down a list of the things that you want from your site, make mock-ups if you have to. Um, you don't have to have them build the entire website, so this is important, right? So like, let's say you have 50 products on your website, you don't want them to design an individual page for each product, that would be 50 pages. You just want them to design one page, a template, that you can then edit on the back end, right? So it's really cheap, you're paying 75 bucks for all your product pages, right? Um, another big thing for us was, needed very quick, fast, one-page checkout design. Like when you're selling to teenagers, they, their attention span is crazy. Like if you have to make them click like shipping information and click next page and it takes two seconds to load, like they're gone, right? So I knew it was gonna be important that we had to have a one-page checkout very quick. Um, I wanted something light with simple colors. Uh, and basically I just needed five pages. I needed a home page, a product page, a page for like content, a blog, and then a blog post page. And then we developed a bunch of stuff later, but very simple, right? So I paid like, 250 bucks, you can check out the site, it looks really good, and it had to look great on mobile, that was obviously important too. <coughs> so again, the checkout had to be as quick as possible, so I'm just gonna kinda run you through the design and how it, how it came out. Again, we're selling to these young kids, um, getting them to do anything is a hassle. <laughs> so we wanted to have quick checkout, everything runs through PayPal, very fast, very get on, get off, um, as quickly as possible, PayPal's awesome for that. 
Um, it really speeds up the checkout process. You also can't go anywhere on the site without seeing sizing info. Remember I said that sizing info is a huge pain point. So we want to design that into the site. It's on the left sidebar, you can't miss it. Um, importance of category pages, just talked about this, right? So <laughs> we developed category pages, um, putting the review schema on there so the stars will pull through in the SERPs, um, and also leaving a place for unique text. With, if you don't do this, what happens is uh, it's just gonna, your website is gonna default to just a blank page with products on it, and there's gonna be nothing unique about that page. So if you wanna rank for those plural keywords like rope shoelaces, flat shoelaces, you've gotta have a unique page, and that text, that additional bit of text that you can add, even if it's just you know, 50 words really helps to do that, especially because your competitors probably aren't doing it. Uh, again, if, you have a, if you're on WordPress, the Yoast plugin makes it really easy to do that, to change the title. That's obviously really important. Um, changing all the SEO data on those category pages, all your pages really. Does everyone here know what breadcrumbs are? Breadcrumbs are really important for, for e-commerce SEO. Breadcrumbs, no? Yes, okay. Well, the reason why these are important from a technical point of view, so search engines are spiders. They crawl links. Um, and these are links, right? And search engines are very lazy. And what this does, it tells them exactly where they are on the site and users also. And if you've got like a pretty deep uh, cart process or a pretty deep uh, product page process, if they're clicking through like 25 products, you want them to know where they are on the site at all times. It's good for the user experience and it's also really good for SEO. It's a must for e-commerce sites. You obviously want to have your keywords in the title and keywords in the URL, pretty straightforward SEO stuff. Um, the review stars on the page, again, like you have to have these review stars on a product page. If you don't have reviews, you're gonna look like crap in the SERPs. Uh, multiple high-res images, this is something that's a huge pet peeve of mine, like when I go to a site and there's like one picture and it's from the, the manufacturer's site, again, like that trust factor, people don't wanna buy from that. Like you wanna make it seem like there's a brand, like you actually own this product, that it's yours. So one of the ways that I hack this is, uh, there's some websites that, that you can ship your product to to get high-res images taken, but uh, it can get pretty expensive. So really all that you need to do is if you have an iPhone, I, I do a lot of video marketing, so I have a pretty nice like DL, 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 DLSR camera, uh, like a Nikon, right? I paid a couple hundred bucks for it, it's a good camera. I took it with that, but you can do it with an iPhone too. I actually saw it on YouTube. This girl was taking amazing product photos. Just get natural lighting, so if you've got a good window in your house or whatever, just put them on your bed, take a picture of your products, whatever it is, um, and then just send it. I actually got a guy on Fiverr to edit the photos. <laughs> he was five bucks for, for 20, excuse me, 20 images. Um, so I spent, what, like 30 bucks for all the products, photos on my site, and you guys can check them out later. They're, this is what they look like, they came out great. Um, just drop the background, have them clean it up a little bit, very easy to do. Um, you also wanna make sure to optimize the images on your product pages. So if you actually go to Google Images and type in Jordan 1 laces, we rank first for it. it drives a lot of sales, actually, again, because I said images were gonna be huge. <laughs> and the reason for this is, is that uh, you have to make sure to name the raw file with the keywords the alt tags, and then the description. So those three things are key for image, uh, image SEO, but if you can do that, they can rank very, very quickly and drive a lot of traffic. You always wanna have a space on your product pages for um, some bullets, and these bullets should really be selling points. They, you can put keywords in there, but really they should help people sell to understand what the product is, and really the value and the benefit of that product. That's what those bullet points are for. Then underneath, it's always good to have more text on the page, so uh, make sure to add some detailed descriptions and, and unique text again. And then again, remember that I said that um, people were searching for all these different colorways of sneakers and stuff? We put them on the product pages, right? Why? Because the page is about laces, and then we've got these keywords on here. We've got the name of the sneaker on there. These laces are compatible with Jordan 1 Red, Jordan 1 whatever, right? So we're getting those long tail keywords on the page without stuffing them on. They look great too, right? So. You know, it's important to keep like SEO and marketing when you're, when you're building your website. Um, and if you just tell this, like I didn't design this, I just told this to the designer and he made it look amazing. So <coughs> now we're gonna talk about content. Um, and I'm excited to talk about this actually because I don't, I don't think they really talk about content too much in, in OMG and um, I built my business on content marketing. Uh, it's, content is what is everything. <laughs> it literally is everything on the web. Um, so, because they don't talk about it on G, let's talk about why it's so important. So number one, it takes a long time to rank for like your money keywords, right? Like you're not just gonna launch a new site and, and rank for, you know, like, I don't know, shoelaces. It just doesn't happen, it takes time. But content can rank really, really well, really fast, if you know how to do it the right way, which I'm gonna talk about. It's scalable. People are only gonna search for white shoelaces so many times every month, then what? You just, you done? Like, no. You build the content on top of that to drive more traffic and it's scalable. You can just scale it infinitely to get as many people to your site as possible. 
It lets you join the conversation on social, like you're not just gonna start putting up product links and expect to build a Facebook page, it's not gonna happen. You need content of value to your audience to actually build a presence on social media. Generates links more naturally. We don't have to talk about that too much, but it's, it's a fact. Um, I touched on this earlier, but the path to purchase has a lot of touch points, right? Like, who, who, who's bought, bought a TV here in the last year? Anybody? Did you just Google it and find the first link and buy it? No, you had like 50 tabs open, right? You were reading reviews, you were checking social, you were asking friends, like, that's the way it works. Like, consumers are so empowered right now. And if you have additional content, like if you've got FAQ, if you've got resource guides, if you actually are funneling people to your site for this information, they're gonna buy from you right away. And that also has the, the brand touch points, right? Like, you've gotta understand that the internet is not just a one path anymore, right? Like, people are so empowered, they're so intelligent, they're on the phones, they're on the computers, they're everywhere. You have to be as many places as possible, and content is really what allows you to do that. So, how do we find content to build? Like, what do we do? Go back to SEM Rush. Literally, the same, the same report that we were at before, all you're gonna do is you're gonna type in your keywords, again, and just look at your competitors. <coughs> we wanna find topics, not keywords. So, topics are a little bit broader, right? Keywords are like, you know, buy Jordan shoelaces, right? We don't wanna build content around that, it's a little bit spammy. What we wanna do is take a step back and find all these pages that are ranking, Go to SMRush, look at your top competitors pages again, and just understand, let me go back, and just understand like what it is that they're ranking for. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna pull that report down to Excel, and you're gonna filter it. And you're gonna look at those groups, and you're gonna say, what story are these keywords telling? So all these keywords are gonna be mapping to one page once you have it filtered, right? One page could be ranking for 100 keywords. What is that story, what is that page about that it's ranking for? That's your topic. You take that topic, uh, sorry, you also wanna focus on things that are non-product based, or like non, so again, so like anything that's like buy or like hire, those aren't the keywords you wanna build content around. You wanna focus on more informational type queries. Um, that, but that still have intent or relevancy, right? So like the lace swaps, right? Like people are looking for ideas for lace swaps, but my product pages aren't gonna rank for that. But I can build a blog post around, you know, 10 different lace swaps for, for Jordan 1s, right? And if people find that, then it's a very high intent per, uh, keyword as well. So what we do is we just dump these all into Google Sheets. This is actually a screenshot from a client. We do topical research for them. And uh, we just come up with all these topics. We just understand what it's about, um, the content type that we're gonna create. And once you have this done, I mean, you pretty much just got like a book of content to create. Um, so I know I kind of sped through that, but I've got a really great video on my YouTube channel about topical research in depth. Uh, I suggest you check it out because it's, it's really, really powerful stuff. So for Laces Out, what type of topics did we find? Uh, we found a lot of search volume around release dates of like branded sneakers. So again, like I said, like people just go crazy for Jordans, it's insane. Um, and like they release them in limited waves. So they'll do like one release per year for like the Jordan one, I don't know, like reds, right? And people search for them, <laughs> just in the disgusting amount. And this is actually like breaking news on news sites. Uh, so we found there was a lot of volume around that. We found there was good volume around specific specific sneaker type lacing sizes. So like, what is, you know, Jordan 1 lacing size and guide? Like, you know, what's, what length should my Jordan 1 laces be? A lot of volume around that. Uh, good volume around shoelace recommendations for specific sneakers. So people were searching for like new laces or like upgrades for like, uh, again, like, you know, what, what laces look good with my Jordan 1, stuff like that. And then there's a ton of volume around just like sneaker specific, like just head keywords like Jordan 1, um, like Nike Cortez, stuff like that. Uh, and a lot of images and stuff too. So again, like the on-feet queries were very, very big. So how do we attack it? We attack it with a funnel. I don't know if you guys saw my webinar that I did a couple weeks ago where I talked about this funnel model. Um, but I'm actually gonna just skip through this really quickly because I go through these one by one. Don't worry, I'm gonna get to it. So the, top, the first one is awareness that I'm gonna start with. So the type of content that we wanted to create for the awareness was those sneaker release dates, right? This is very high level, very top of the funnel. Really no purchase intent, but still touch points with the brand, right? So we did short, high-level content that satisfied the direct searcher query. So if you look at the title of this, it's literally sneaker name and then release date, right? And there's a ton of search volume, like a, a disturbing amount of search volume around that. <laughs> so we just wanted to capture that by creating that very high-level content. That was the very top of the funnel content that we started creating. It also allows us to build what I call domain-level relevancy. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about links, um, but domain authority and authority from search does not just come from links. It comes from content depth, it comes from relevancy, and it comes from quality. So if you've got a lot of very good supporting content that supports what the theme of your domain is about and people are sharing it, then it's gonna help to build authority with search without links. So content adds depth. Depth 
and it helps search engines really index you for a lot more keywords a lot faster. Um, the interest level stage, so this is the next step down the funnel. Uh, we started doing huge roundups of these sneakers, so like uh, the 75 best Nike Air Hirachi colorways, and this, this uh, Nike Air Hirachi gets searched for like, I don't know, something stupid, like 300,000 times a month, and we rank on the first page for it, it's crazy. With this stupid article that's just literally images that I had a VA build, it's, it's crazy. So uh, we started doing very long, very detailed image heavy posts that round up, so this is why I call it a round up, a highly searched sneaker, so literally, if if people are looking for Hirachis, like I said, that plural keyword, right? They're not just looking for one Hirachi. They're looking for a list of them. So we just gave it to them, right? Same thing with the category pages. So um, this was one of the ways that we hacked that. Uh, these <laughs> moved rank really, really well. Um, really, really well. We had one post for this Adidas sneaker that does, um, oh my God, it does like 50,000 visits a month. Just something crazy. Um, Next up is the desire stage. So this is a third step down the funnel. This is uh, a lot more specific to purchase, a lot more intent. So again, like lacing styles. Like this is a picture, again, I have a, a really nice camera, so I created a lot of this content myself um, when I was working at home months ago. But, um, but yeah, I mean, basically what I did is I just put these laces in, in, a, in a pair of sneakers and just took pictures of it. And that was a piece of content. Now this ranks really, really, really well, and it sells a lot of laces too, because anybody that's looking for lacing recommendations for like their Air Max, they find this article, they see 10 pictures of laces and sneakers and they're very likely to buy, right? So again, we're coming after those keywords that are down the funnel, but they're not necessarily product page searches. It's not buy uh, red and white shoelaces, right? Which gets searched for like this, but we're driving people into that funnel by giving them ideas and capturing that search volume that they're looking for. So uh, this is the best way that I know to quickly rank for money keywords. This is how we started making our initial money first was actually with content. Our product pages didn't rank for like four months or so. Um, and this is another one. So again, when I talked about that, a lot of search volume, a lot of pain points around like shoelace size. So we started just building individual pages that were just sizing guides. And these drive so much traffic and so much sales, it's crazy. Like any sort of these, these queries about like Jordan 1 lacing or Jordan lacing, these pages rank for it. And you can see this, the yellow call to action button by these laces, it's pretty straightforward. It functions just like a product page. Um, and it ranked within like two weeks, just something crazy. Um, and then the top, this is the attention stage. This is something that not a lot of people talk about, but like I said, um, there's just, we're inundated with so much media and so much crap all the time that uh, in order to get to the awareness stage, you've gotta have people's attention first. Right? And attention is actually the hardest thing to get, and that's really where social media comes into play. Like a lot of people look at it as like a direct conversion channel, it's really not. It's really meant for branding, it's meant for attention, um, and it's meant to constantly be in people's faces, adding value to them, right? So, uh, as mentioned, social, it's just incredibly time consuming. Like I don't even manage my own personal social accounts, it's so time consuming. Um, so the content that we created for those other ones, like the sneaker releasing updates, the Hirachi roundups, that stuff, it's great to share on social media, so that kind of took care of it but that doesn't really drive growth, and I'm gonna talk about that next. So promotion, so we're gonna talk a little about link building now. This is, this is uh, always interesting to people, link building. So <clears throat> the thing about this industry was I knew that we didn't need uh, a ton of links to rank, just some good ones, because like I said, it wasn't really a link heavy industry. Um, so like I said, I don't, I don't use PBNs. Um, I, I, we do outreach, it's just what we do. Uh, so we did guest posting. Uh, you can see here, there's a link from a DA42 site about running shoes, right? It's an awesome blog, and you can see the nice link right there because you control the link placement. Um, that's a link to the homepage that says, the Anchor Texas sells shoelaces for sneakers. Incredible link. We punched up our rankings like three days later from this guest post that I paid like 20 bucks for a freelance writer to write, right? So how do you find guest posts? Very easy, just go to Google, pr put in, in bunny quotes, write for us because that'll pull up a page that has the keywords right for us on this page, and then just jam your keyword next to it. You can see here's four sites on really good blogs that accept content, right? So all you have to do is then find a freelance writer, give them a topic, have them write about it, insert your links, and send it to them, and you're good, right? It's more effort than a PBN, but it's cheaper, and it's 100 times more effective. <laughs> and it's there forever, too. And these people also, the, the good thing about these sites is that these people are actively marketing their sites, right? They're actively pushing it through social. They're actively getting their own links. They're actively creating content. They're doing all the legwork for you. So it's beautiful about guest posting. Uh, so another great one. Has anyone here uh, heard of Pitchbox, the tool? I can't see anything up here. It's like three people. Okay. I'm about to be their best salesman. So this is actually my favorite, favorite tool. What Pitchbox does, um, it pretty much automates outreach. You give it a couple keywords and it will go out and it will find 
contact, contact opportunities for you, and there's different types of campaigns. So, like I said, so let me just go back really quick. So that right for us, that's called a search operator. You guys familiar with that, search engine operators? So what Pitchbox does is it builds operators into their platform. So like right for us, and then it'll have like product review campaigns where it goes out and it finds bloggers that accept products on their site for reviews. So what I did is I just fired up a Pitchbox product review campaign. I gave it some keywords like sneakers, um, shoes, stuff like that. Um, and it goes out and it automatically finds just scrapes massive lists of websites and it finds their contact information. And then what you do is you write a pitch, an email pitch, and you upload it to Pitchbox, and then it fires them all off, just automatically. It's so powerful. Um, and this is what the pitch looked like. I'm just gonna read it to you. I never show my pitches too, so these are really, really valuable. Um, basically the way product review works, you guys know how this works? You find a blogger that you know wants a product, you send it to them, they write a review, and then they link to you. They get a free product from it. Easy, right? Very easy to do. Um, pretty much what Shreds did, except they were doing it on Instagram, but we want to focus on actually getting links from blogs. So what this pitch says, is, says, hey guys, my name is Ryan. I'm reaching out on behalf of Laces Out, an e-commerce store that sells laces. I'm reaching out because we're kicking off an, influ an influencer program and checking after checking out your site, I think you're a perfect fit. We work with bloggers like yourself in a number of ways. Free product, sponsored posts. If you're interested, let me know. Really easy. Again, like Pitchbox goes out and finds 200 bloggers that accept products. Um, you know, we got like, I don't know, 30 links or something like this from just, and our, my laces cost like 50 cents to me. So I'm literally getting links for the cost of the laces and the cost of the shipping. So for like three bucks, we're getting links on really good sites. And it took me like, I don't know, an hour to do it. Um, very easy. <clears throat> this is a really big one. I'm gonna spend a little more time talking about this because, um, I don't know, man, I just think the PR industry is kind of a sham. It's just like they, like a PR agency charges like 30 grand. A lot of our clients came from PR agencies and they charge like 40 grand or something stupid to like get you on Huffington Post and uh, you guys know how easy it is, right? Um, so what we do, we do this for all of our clients. What we do is we create an infographic and then we'll find a bunch of media sites that would like to talk about it and we send it to them and they post it. <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna talk about, so this is from hotnewhiphop.com. It's a huge like lifestyle site we got on there. We got on a bunch of sites. So quickly talk about this process because I think it's important. Um, so any link building in general is just about the exchange of value, right? Like the value that you get is the link. The value that you have to give to them is something else. Guest posting, you're creating content for them. That's the value you're giving them. You get a link in exchange. A product review, you're giving them a product. That's the value to them they're giving you the link in exchange. For PR, to get on these big media sites, these reporters have deadlines. They have to put stuff up. It's, it sucks being a writer. They have deadlines. So if you can give them a story or a headline or something of interest to their readers, they'll post it, right? Infographics are great for that because uh, they're great on social media. They're highly shareable. Um, this one uh, is a can of Coke one. It went like crazy viral um, about a year ago. Um, and it was just, I think it was some SEO agency that did it and they just got crazy coverage. All they did was said what happens to you after you drink a can of Coke, which is the information they got online, they just put it into a visual diagram, right? So like, how do you come up with an infographic? We do it a couple of ways. Like I said, we do it for clients. The easiest way is to just find data points and make them a visual diagram, right? So like, one of the ones that I like to say is like, if you just Google, um, you know, like what, what's the best city to work in in 2016, you're gonna find like lists of data, like Miami has a job rate of 34%. You just send that to a designer and say, hey, make this into an infographic, and it's done. And it's an interesting piece of content that you can then pitch to anybody that covers jobs, anybody that covers, obviously this has to be relevant to whatever it is that your site is about. Like, I wouldn't do this for Laces Out because there's no relevancy between jobs and uh, Laces, but if I had a client that um, was like a recruiting company or um, did some sort of like HR software, this would be hyper relevant to them, right? So all you have to do is get that infogram, infographic built, pitch to those reporters that cover this stuff, and you're done. Another way is uh, Ahrefs, you guys know Ahrefs, I talked about this, they have a tool called Content Explorer. It's very similar to SCM Rush and, and BuzzSumo. Uh, you type in some keywords and you'll, I like to find like listicle articles, so like, you know, uh, I don't know, 10 ways to braid your hair or something, right? You can take that and make that into an infographic and pitch that. Um, all you have to do is find an, if, <laughs> put skills with a Z. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, find a designer on Upwork, um, really easy to do. Uh, I found a dude, he does my infographics for like 100 bucks a piece, really cheap. Um, and if you think about that cost um, for the links, it's ridiculously cheap. So for Laces Out, we did uh, 
talked about that shoelace sizing guide for Jordan 1s, right? So all we did was we took an image of each Jordan, like Jordan 1, Jordan 2, Jordan 3, Jordan 4, and literally just put like the size, like so 46 inches, one inch across, stuff like that. We just put it into a diagram, and um, I had that built for $80. And uh, once that's done, you've got to find the reporters to pitch. I use BuzzStream Influencer Platform. It's awesome. Literally, again, you type in a keyword, and it pulls up all of the reporters that cover that topic. And uh, you can pitch them through BuzzStream, but I like to pull it down to a CSV file, upload it to PitchBox, fire it off. You're done, right? So I'm going to read you this pitch that we sent them. Uh, again, this is never, never read these out loud. but. Uh, so it says, hey, Brock, and I spelled his name wrong. His name was Brock, and I named it Brick, which is pretty stupid. <laughs> but I said, I've been following your stuff on High Snowbody. High Snowbody, that's the name of the website. I'm a fan. I'm reaching out to see if you accept content or pitches from outside sources. My designer is working on an infographic that details proper lacing sizes for Jordans. Here's an image. Uh, you can publish under your name. I'll write an intro for you. All I ask is attribution at the end of the post. And they published it. And it was like a DA75 site. It drove hundreds of visits. Um, Check it out if you want. Um, again, so like the result of this was four DA 70 plus placements, uh, and then like a ton of bloggers too. You just pitch it to bloggers and they'll put it up, whatever, um, for 80 bucks. You know what I mean? Just crazy cheap. You know, granted, I made that process seem a lot easier than than uh, than it really is. The key to this is not the pitching. It's not finding the people. It's actually the content. It has to be valuable and it has to be relevant to who you're pitching. But if you can do that, you can get a lot of good links for really cheap. Um, and then forums too, man. We, we, we got some account in these forums that I said they're very highly active, they're very non-spammy, and uh, we built some links there. So let's talk about process and scale um, because, you know, you might be sitting there thinking like, damn, dude, this is a lot of work. Uh, you know, I thought you said you only worked 10 hours a week, but like I said, that's kind of the strategy, right? That's 90% up front. That's the first two months I spent a lot of time uh, getting this all set up and really putting my brain into this, but after that, you know, and honestly, if you take anything from this talk, I want you to, to understand this because this is highly applicable to any business model. Um, if you find yourself doing the same thing twice, anything, sending an email, building a, a blog post, a product page, whatever, stop, because you're doing it wrong. There's a better way to do it. You should never, ever, ever do the same thing twice. It's a complete waste of your time, complete waste of your time, because anything that you're doing twice, it can be automated or outsourced, 100%. And if, if you're doing it twice, then your, your time, as a business owner or whatever it is that you do. Whatever it is that you do is too valuable to do anything twice. So repeatable actions, I always just, thank you, thank you. Go our way. <laughs> so repeatable efforts, um, outsource. Outsource and automate. Either find a piece of software that can do it or outsource it. Um, so, blew my load too early, I just said this. Um, so like writing all these, you know, like updating social media like this stuff is just a waste of your time. And if you're doing it right now, please stop. Just don't do it anymore. Thank you. Like <laughs> okay, so how do you do it? Um, basically, like I said, Laces Out, I don't do anything for it. It's completely automated and it's growing like crazy. And it's not like the site is just sitting there, like we're constantly creating new content, we're constantly doing stuff for it, but I don't do it. I have a VA do it, he's $2 an hour, that's not what I chose to pay him, that's what he wanted. Um, so don't feel bad for him. But, um, <laughs> but basically, uh, the way I do it is, it's about a process, right? It's about literally having a step-by-step -step process. And, and let me take another step back, right? Like, I think that we do some pretty advanced web marketing at Webris, but nothing that we do is rocket science. We're not curing cancer here, let's be serious. We're selling people shit that they don't need. Um, and, it can be done by anybody who is empowered and trained, right? I mean, you guys know, some of you guys are new to this stuff, you picked up a lot, it's once you kind of get the grasp of it, and if you have a process to do it over and over again, anybody can do it. So um, by building a private YouTube channel, literally that's it, I just do like talking, talking voices, videos of like literally like, hey, this is our Facebook page, like here's the login, it literally, I mean, just building that for him step by step, and he does social media management. He researches and builds content for us. Um, and literally, again, like, don't ever think that what you're doing is, is, is too advanced for people, because it's really not. Like, everything can be boiled down to a process. Keyword research, literally, like, even building the thought process into somebody's mind of, like, the framework that I laid out for you guys for that stuff, like, literally just, like, okay, type space now. See what those keywords are, pull those down, right? Like, it can be built into a process. It's not too difficult. Uh, and customer service is another thing, like I said, I don't hate 
answering email. So um, let's take a deeper look. I'm actually gonna show you the exact process pretty much um, that I did to automate our Facebook and Instagram page. Um, so our Facebook page has like 10,000 likes and Instagram has like 3,500, right? And it's, I've never, ever touched it. It's just completely off. He pastes it in, now we've got a video on that page. And then he takes the link from where he first saw it, so sneakernews.com, and he pastes it in there. Then he goes into Photoshop, he opens up Photoshop, anyone can use Photoshop, very easy to do, and I built him a template. He takes the image, he replaces the old image, saves it and uploads it, now we've got a unique image for that post. So now, what we have whew, is we've got automated content on Facebook, on social, and we've got automated content on WordPress. Now what I have to do is I have a very low cost writer go in and write like 250 words to round out that blog post based on the link that he put in there, right? So you see how the process completes itself. Now we've got an automated circle of Facebook updates that nobody else is doing, Instagram updates that nobody else is doing, and blog content that's really highly relevant, building relevance to the site and driving a ton of extra traffic for us too. And I haven't even listed a finger, right? It took me 10 minutes to make that video for him. Make sense? Okay, so now everything it laces out runs on a process and managed by a VA, so everything, everything. That's just one process that I built for him. I mean, the product pages. I had never built a product page. It's a complete waste of time, but he knows how to create, he knows how to name images because literally I said, look it, here's an image. This is how you do an alt tag. This is how you do a title tag. Like, it's not rocket science. You just have to give them the tools and the knowledge to do it and empower them, and they can do it. So like I said, I pay him $2 an hour. He works for three hours a day. That's six hours a day or 180 hours a month. This business is costing me probably about double that because I use them, I use two of them now. So about, um, about at math, what's that, 360 a month? It's not bad, right? And I don't do anything. So <coughs> this is the McDonald's model. This actually offends a lot of people for some reason, but if you look at the most successful businesses, um, you know, it's about boiling anything down to a process. I do this for my agency, everything. You will not walk into my agency and see anything having, not having a very specific process, right? The way that we, has anyone here taken my link building course, by the way? Yeah, is it, is it a process or what? Thank you, what, is it good? Speak up. Is it, I need to get you the mic. He basically said, he, said, he thinks everyone in here should buy it, just FYI, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, but, but that's kind of the way my brain functions, is that everything should be a process, and I think that anybody can really do it, right? So it's a McDonald's model again, you should really look into it. Um, you know, it's, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of what's corroding America at the same time, but it's also what makes businesses just light on fire, and that's building a process, and it's doing scalable processes over and over and over again, and letting the business owner focus on things that matter, right? Like, you shouldn't be doing the work anymore once you get to a certain point. It's a hard lesson I had to learn, and my agency really started growing when I understood this lesson that I cannot be doing the work anymore. I have to build a process, train my people, empower them, make them happy, and let them do it, and that's how you grow, okay? And again, you can still deliver very high quality work with very low cost inputs, right? Like you would be shocked, shocked at some of the links that we build for our clients and who is actually building them. It's crazy, right? And it's not spammy, it's, it's all done according to process, but again, like I said, a lot of people look at things like link outreach and think it's too much work. It's like, yeah, if you try and do it, it's too much work, but like you shouldn't be doing it anyways, right? So, <coughs> so FYI, quick sales pitch, that's what my training teaches is how to do link outreach at scale. If you're interested, hit me up. Um, and I do this with everything it laces out, right? Like everything it laces out runs this way and also with Webers too, it's a little bit more difficult with Webers because, um, you know, we do a lot more communication and stuff like that. Um, but this was a hard lesson I had to learn with this agency because the way I market my business is through me. I believe in building a personal brand and people come to you for that. But the problem is that when you build a personal brand, people wanna work with you, but you can't work with everybody. And the problem that I was having was I was having trouble scaling because Every client that I got, it was a consulting agency. It wasn't an agency, it was a consulting place. <coughs> so I had to stop that, and I did that by process. I had to train my people how to do everything that was in my head, just like this. You should see our internal processes. Like, we've got crazy documents like this in videos that, um, you know, they ultimately appreciate because it makes their job easier, right? Like, my employees, you might think it drives them crazy, but every day they know what to do, and they can work from home. Like, I've got a very expensive office in Miami, and they never come in anymore because they don't have to. <laughs> But um, side note, anyways, so let's talk about what's next. So, um, you know, I, the future is really wide open for this business. Uh, for me, the plan is to just keep growing it. Again, this is just a side project just to let it keep going what it is, but eventually uh, add additional SKUs on top of it. So selling sneakers, selling merch, selling t-shirts, selling socks, stuff like that. Uh, I just have to get off my ass and start doing it, but 
to me, the ultimate goal is to be the highest traffic website uh, in the sneaker niche and build relationships and become that go-to media outlet. Um, I get free sneakers all the time. Like, these were free shoes. I like free shoes, and that's what happens when, uh, when you've got a high traffic website. People send you stuff for free. It's crazy. Um, and until then, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. And uh, that's, that's it. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Everyone.